Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I am just a casual sim racer. Today I will be reviewing WRC10. I reviewed this game while using my Thrustmaster T300 with Fanatec CSL Elite pedals with load cell. All settings for the wheel were left on default, however I tested the game's force feedback both on default settings and also with increased overall force feedback strength and reduced vibration strength. WRC10 is a game developed by KT Racing and published by Nikon. It was released on September 2nd, 2021. WRC10 is the official World Rally Championship video game. It focuses, of course, on rally racing, now including both modern and historical content, as the game is celebrating the 50th anniversary of the World Rally Championship. WRC10 had somewhat of a rough launch with more than its share of bugs and issues, but multiple patches have been pushed out by KT, and now the game is running pretty smoothly. If you enjoy rally racing, then I can give WRC10 a strong recommendation to you. Even if you are just more of a general sim racing fan, I can still recommend that you check WRC10 out. This is a rally game, so there really isn't any AI to race against in the traditional sense, and there is no rally cross included, as in other rally games. During any quick rally, even there is no AI times to compete against, which I found very disappointing. I thought that for sure would be included. The historic mode, of course, has timed objectives to overcome, but there's no real standings when you finish those either. There's no one you're really competing against, so it makes it more of a challenge mode than actually feeling like you're competing in the historic rallies. When you get to the career mode, you finally find real AI times and competitors to compete against. These times are adjustable using the difficulty slider in the settings, and I found the range to be broad and enjoyed the AI times in the career mode. This doesn't stop me from giving the WRC 10 a thumbs down, however, and a 3 in terms of its AI. Because though I understand it is a rally game, the fact that it doesn't include even AI times in the quick race and the 50th anniversary mode is a big letdown in my book. The first thing you will see after finishing a quick race or historical challenge will be your times compared to global users and your friends. Additionally, you can race head to head in rally competitions and see the time margin displayed in the information overlay. WRC 10 has an all time concurrent user peak of 854 with a 24 hour peak of 274. Overall, those numbers significantly trail Dirt Rally 2, which has an all-time peak of 3,533 and a 24-hour peak of 1,849, and rather align more similarly with the meager active user counts of Automobilista 2, which has an all-time peak of 1,150 with a 24-hour peak of 243. However, smaller active user counts tend to not affect rally games as much as other types of racing titles. Additionally, KT will be releasing multiple free updates to WRC10 that will allow you to both create online groups, join other online players, and compete in rallies over a period of time. And then at the start of 2022, WRC10 will be adding an online championship mode, which will be a first for the series and sounds pretty cool from what I hear. One feature that particularly I enjoy that has already been added to WRC10, however, is the split screen local multiplayer. This feature isn't as common anymore in racing games, and it is really nice to see, while well, of course being fun to play with friends. Overall, I award WRC 10 a score of 7 for the multiplayer category. WRC 10 has a visual style that I appreciate greatly, a focus on a gritty, realistic look that in my opinion works really great for the game. I did notice the occasional background texture popping in and out but this wasn't a big issue on my computer, though I do worry about lower performing machines. The sound is solid, a nice improvement over WRC9 and it should be, being that KT Games re-recorded all the engine sounds again for this release. However, WRC10 sounds still don't approach the very best sim racing games such as Assetto Corsa Competizione. Overall, the audio visuals are WRC10's biggest strength, and I give this category a score of 9. WRC 10 has a lot of content features that are just like the Formula 1 series of games by Codemasters. A full career mode, quick races, online play, and split screen multiplayer. One difference from other racing games that focus on one particular series, like Assetto Corsa Competizione or the aforementioned Formula 1 games, 
is that WRC 10 includes a much wider variety of cars to race, with 20 historic cars in addition to the WRC, WRC 2, WRC 3, and WRC Junior cars. In the quick race mode, WRC 10 allows you to put any car on any stage, historical or modern. Speaking of stages, there are 12 rally locations in the game, including Monte Carlo, Sweden, Croatia, Portugal, Estonia, Spain, Italy, Safari, Kenya, Finland, Chile, Japan, and Wales. In total, 120 stages spread across those 12 locations. Additionally, there are two more rally locations, Belgium and Greece, which will be added to the game in the coming months. There are also six historic rallies included already, and these include Acropolis, San Remo, Germany, and Argentina, among a couple others. The biggest hype feature of WRC 10, of course, is its 50th anniversary mode, which currently includes 19 historical events, with eight more unique historical events on the way in the coming months. One thing I would like to just quickly point out here is that the 50th anniversary mode time requirements cannot be changed because they don't scale with the global difficulty setting, so this means that you won't be able to change the difficulty of the historical challenges if you change the global setting or there's no way to change it at all. I have not found this to be a problem for me as their requirements are challenging, but it kind of right slid right in at my skill set. But it would be nice if KT would allow for at least a choice between novice, regular, expert time requirements in a future update. As is tradition for the WRC series, WRC 10 includes a full-featured and in-depth career mode, similar in depth to the Formula 1 games by Codemasters, which I've referenced before. This is one of the biggest standout features of WRC 10, and you can find yourself investing hours into your rally career. Also for the first time, the career mode now allows you to design and add your own team. Another new feature in WRC 10 is that now there's a custom livery editor, which is pretty in-depth. You can paint your cars, apply any of the 500 stickers included in the game, placing them on the cars is simple. You move them into position with the analog stick, adjust the size and rotation, and then confirm it. Overall, the custom livery editor is just more in-depth than games like Dirt 5 or the Formula 1 series of games. At the end of the day, WRC 10 has a solid collection of content to explore and enjoy. But the incredible historical content really stands out to me. And that's what helped to bump up WRC10's game content score to an 8. This game had a lot of issues for me at launch, with WRC10 initially failing to recognize my Thrustmaster T300 wheel, and many other users also reported issues with controller compatibility and recognition. Eventually, after updating my wheel software, I was able to use the game. Though occasionally still, my T300 would lose force feedback at random times and I'd have to exit out of the game and reboot my system to restore it. Thankfully, after an update to the game was pushed out following release, those issues seem to have dissipated. One area that has been fixed and existed in previous releases is WRC 10's strange partial mouse support in the UI. The game also has its fair share of bugs, especially during the first week of play. And during that first week, it occasionally even crashed to my desktop. The one thing I do have to give KT credit for though is the consistent patches they pushed out, which has fixed almost everything by this point. Perhaps that rough start should penalize my recommendation of WRC 10 more, but WRC 10 still managed to draw me in. I think that speaks to the game experience itself. The WRC series by KT has always been known for its incredible stages. They are beautiful, challenging, and very diverse. Then on top of that, WRC 10 this year has the incredible focus on the 50th anniversary of the World Rally Championship. Everyone who follows my channel knows I favor vintage and classic racing content above everything else. And this historic anniversary content is the best the developer has ever included in any rally game. WRC 10 has modified its stages essentially with classic track skins. These place spectators closer, modify certain track set objects to better fit the time period, Essentially, it's the way that mod tracks like in Assetto Corsa will sometimes have their skins that you can download that provide an awesome vintage touch, but don't necessarily change the core track experience that much. That's the same thing that's going on here. In addition, WRC 10 has added a nice selection of classic rally cars that I really enjoy driving. I know WRC 9 and other past titles also had classic cars, but there's definitely been a clear improvement in the physics from past titles like WRC 9 compared to this title. The career mode in WRC 10 is cool as well, and I have sunk several hours into the mode. And I also think it's really important that more racing games include career modes, and it's something that I think is really great and enjoyable. 
but at the end of the day, the 50th anniversary content just steals the show for me. I would give WRC 10 two clear thumbs up, except there are just still a couple of rough edges, and boy did the game have a rough launch. So ultimately I'm going to end up docking it by one point. As a result, my personal recommendation for WRC 10 is a score of 8. In terms of physics, KT has closed the gap and is now on the doorstep of full simulation. While using a wheel, the game is challenging. However, when using a controller, the game is a bit easier to drive, showing off a much more simlite feel. Some reviewers have said that it shows the flaws and the overall realism of the game, and though I am not a fan of making it easier for controller players to drive a racing game, I don't think it's a flaw in the physics for wheel drivers. Rather, I surmise it is native assists that are coming into effect to make the game easier for controller users. No matter how that discussion goes, when using a wheel, I personally find WRC10's physics to be the best of any WRC game and quite authentic overall. There is a more realistic momentum when sliding cars through corners, and the change in grip levels across the varying surfaces is more noticeable than in any past games. For example, you will notice when you have the wrong tires on your car for a certain stage. WRC's 10's physics require you to make small steering adjustments throughout each stage, and the diverse challenging rally stages will push your reflexes to their limits. Now, when it comes to the force feedback, I just don't have as quite a positive reaction. The default force feedback I found to be pretty terrible on my T300, especially in regard to the vibration effects which were intrusive and annoying. First I reduced them, but then I wasn't getting enough information about the car so I had to increase the overall force feedback strength to 150%. And in the games, force feedback is, was better, but not really perfect or even that great. Overall the physics are solid, but the force feedback for WRC 10 needs quite a few adjustments, and even then it still feels like it was overly reliant upon the vibration effects and misses that finer detail on the wheel's force feedback now that I've reduced it. On balance, I give WRC 10 a score of 7 for its driving experience. WRC 10 received a score of 3 for the AI, 7 for the online, 9 for the audiovisuals, 8 for its content, 8 for my recommendation, and 7 for the driving experience. After punching those numbers into my rating algorithm, I can award WRC 10 an overall score of 72, a very solid score for the title. Now let's add WRC 10 to my 2021 game review list. Currently it slots in at number 1, though I've only reviewed Drift 21 so far this year, which I have linked in the video description below if you'd like to check out that review. Upcoming reviews will include SRX The Game, Hot Wheels Unleashed, and Formula 1 2021. This concludes my review of WRC 10 by KT, I encourage you all to comment below. If you've already purchased WRC 10, what has your experience with the game been like? And if you haven't purchased the game, are you considering it? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And as we conclude, I'd like to thank those of you who are subscribed and helped support this channel. I'll catch all of you in the next video, and until then, have a great rest of your week.